Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chloe Smith, Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, and Eleanor Howey. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon um, and to have this opportunity to speak with you. Um, my name is Eleanor Howie. I'm the CEO of a company called Valiant Lingerie, in which capacity I have the opportunity to work really closely with um, people who've been infected by issues like a diagnosis of breast cancer, for example, um, and in the future moving forward with people who have uh, other functional requirements. And it's in that capacity that I've had the pleasure of meeting um, the, the next speaker, uh, who I'm going to have a chat with today, Chloe Smith. So without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to your Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Um, Chloe, I want to take this opportunity to say a huge congratulations to you on your new role. Eleanor, thank you. Thank you, Conference. Conference, I'm really excited to be with you as a brand new cabinet member and to talk about our absolutely critical job of getting people into work. In fact, you can see one of our conference logos up there to the side of the stage. This is how central the work of my department is to our mission of going for growth. So I'm Chloe Smith, as you introduced me. I'm the Member of Parliament for Norwich North and I'm very proud to be one of the longest serving female Conservatives in Parliament and I'm totally thrilled to now be the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Before we get into our subject matter today, I'd like to thank the activists and the members who are with us here in the hall and maybe following from home as well. I, for one, have beaten Labour five times in a marginal seat, but I know... <laughs> but I know that can't be done without you. So thank you to all of our members and activists and voters and supporters. And the same is true up and down our country. Eleanor, I'd also really like to thank you for joining us today. This is your first experience of a party conference and you are really welcome with us because you're a very inspiring person in what you've done with your business. I find that venture you've taken really inspirational, both as an entrepreneur, of course, but also in terms of what you do. And we share that experience of the impact of breast cancer and as it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, let's say to people who may be following us today that it is an opportunity to check for signs that might be there and to then go and get that seen to at the first opportunity. I think you also show how women can carry on with confidence from what may then follow and I want to use my role as the Secretary of State for the Department for Work and Pensions to also help people to return to confidence and to return to work when that's right for them. Maybe they'll even consider following your steps into setting up their own small business. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you for those kind words. And um, we have spoken about our shared interest in empowering women to feel confident. Um, so it's great to hear. Um, one of the things I'd like to hear from you about is what role you see the DWP playing um, in tackling the challenges that face our labour markets at the moment. I think these challenges are absolutely central, Eleanor, to where we are as a country, and the DWP has a critical role to play in this. I'd like to thank my team uh, at the DWP, and many are here in the audience. My ministers, Victoria Prentice, Alex Berghart, Debbie Steadman Scott, Claire Coutinho, our fantastic PPSs, David Johnson and Jerome Mayhew, and our whips, Joe Churchill and Byron Davis. Now, our focus, our mission, will be to help people to start and stay and succeed in work. And by doing that, we drive the economy. We need to help businesses fill their vacancies. Now, there may well be people in the audience here today, especially as it's business day at party conference, who have had direct experience of this. You may uh, be sitting here having run your own company and thought, I need talent. I need to be able to recruit and to retain. And whilst unemployment is at its lowest rate for 50 years, which we should celebrate, vacancies are nonetheless too high. And so that limits growth, that leaves potential unfulfilled. My department will be helping to rise to that challenge. We want to help claimants into work and we want to support those who are known as economically inactive. Now that means as many as nine million people in our country who have not recently been looking for work. We need, as Conservatives, to focus on what people can do 
not what they can't. And we will be doing that as a department. Now, we're already making changes to help people to find more hours and to earn more. That's critically important at a time when people are very anxious about the cost of living. And of course, it's also true that one of part of our department's mission is to help more people into work, which in turn, mean, in turn means that with a sustainable tax base, we are able also to make sure our public services are on a firm footing for the future. Great, thank you. Um, we've also spoken in the past about our shared interest in business and, and the role of business. So perhaps you can tell me a bit about uh, your view on that. What is the role of businesses? Of course, also absolutely instrumental in this because of course it's businesses own vacancies and we want to be able to play that role to help British business to thrive. Now how do we do that? We are supporting businesses of course with our plan for growth and you've heard the Chancellor uh, and others and I think you have the treat of the business secretary coming uh, shortly this afternoon as well and that includes the supply side reforms and the many projects we'll be working on up and down the country to get things moving. We're also supporting businesses with their energy costs, just as we are supporting households. But we know in turn, of course, that businesses want to be able to take people on, and businesses know that that means they will have to skill people up, they will have to invest in training. I would also point out the virtuous circle between health and work, and this is something my department will be absolutely focused on doing, because work is very good for one's health, and health is critical at work. And businesses know this, I think, for their employees. So to have people start and stay and succeed in good work, British businesses will be thriving as well. Thank you. I think that leads really nicely onto something that's close to my heart and I know is an interest of yours. And that is um, what we can do to ensure that people uh, who have disabilities or um, are facing health conditions um, to support them in playing an active role in the workforce. You're absolutely right about this, Ellen, and it really is a passion that we both share, and I'm absolutely sure shared also by the audience here today. And indeed, also, I know something that a lot of businesses are beginning to focus on, and in many cases, extremely successfully. Let's not forget, of course, that actually we've seen a great uh, milestone passed earlier this year where we surpassed a manifesto commitment. We had hoped we might see a million more disabled people go into jobs over 10 years, in fact, that target got smashed in just five years. So this shows a number of factors at work, but also is something to be very, very proud of. Now, over the past three years, looking a little more widely, we do see rising inactivity, driven by increasing numbers of people leaving the workforce due to health problems, and also some different choices being taken by the over 50s. We, of course, want to retain that talent. And I believe there is much more we can do to help people get the chances that they deserve, because of course, as Conservatives, that is what we believe in. Everyone needs the chance of a good job. When I was the Minister for Disabled People, I saw, as an example, how deaf people were too often left out, too often excluded in work or in education or in wider society. And that's why I was so proud to help lead the changes represented by the British Sign Language Act. And can I also thank our interpreters who are with us all through the conference. Now, there's much more to do. There is much more to do, and that's why we'll be shortly bringing forward our health and disability white paper, in which we'll be looking at how we can make sure that wider support is there and that we look to transform our disability benefits to encourage people to be able to take up the opportunities that are right for them. As Conservatives, we believe nobody should be left behind or written off, and that's why disability employment is so high up my agenda. Thank you. Um, I'm really interested in what you're saying about retaining talent um, as well. Um, what are you doing to support pensioners and older workers so that we're making sure that we don't lose that uh, leadership expertise and, and those years of um, accumulated knowledge from, from older people? You make a really great point, and I suspect there's a great deal of that knowledge and experience here in this room and, uh, and listening into this conversation, because this is absolutely critical. As we are living longer, as we are enjoying fuller lives, I hope, then this becomes an absolutely central point, and it's something so important to businesses as well, 
because, for the reasons we've discussed, businesses are seeking to fill their vacancies. They want, of course, to bring on uh, talent throughout every stage of the workforce, but that absolutely means making sure that older workers are respected and valued. So, in my department, we are stepping up the support that we're offering to job seekers over the age of 50. We're investing, indeed, an extra £22 million to help tackle joblessness in that age group. Also, we are mindful of the wider support that's needed, and so we have confirmed that pensions will again be supported by the triple lock. And I can say today that, as, a lot, as part of continuing what we've done with our broader cost of living payments to help the pensioners, to help the disabled people, to help those on the lowest incomes, we are making the next payment uh, in the month of November, and I know that will be welcome news to many. We do understand that these are very anxious times for people. We know that people are struggling with some of the costs that are rising, and that's why protecting the most vulnerable is a vital priority for me and to this government. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chloe. It's been um, really great hearing about everything that you're doing um, and about your ambitions for the future. Um, I know that there are many things that you're really passionate about and you're bringing that passion um, to your new role and to the challenges that lie ahead. So thank you so much for talking to me about it today. And Ellie, thank you for coming to join us. I really am excited. It's a huge job we've got to do. There's no doubt about that. But if we are going for growth, if we are helping people into more jobs and to earn more and to find opportunity and to find prosperity, then this is where we make that difference. As Conservatives, we believe that everybody should have that chance at a really great job. And I know that the businesses who are here today and who are part of our, the fabric of our nation up and down the land, that is where we can really help. And that is what going for growth really means. It's an opportunity to help millions of people. It's an opportunity to look at inspiring role models, perhaps like yourself, Ellie, but it's an opportunity also to make that difference in every household in the country. That is my mission and conference. Thank you for being part of it as well. Thank you. Thank you.